Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, today we had some exciting news from a company called Geovax. It sounds exciting, but I have investigated the details in this video. I'm going to explain what this press release actually means for a potential HIV vaccine. I'm talking about the press release about Geovax and their MVA-based HIV vaccine. So I've done the homework on your behalf and um, uh, I would like to explain the details to you. So that said, let's do a deeper dive into Geovax and its announcement about a HIV vaccine patent. And um, yeah, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Uh, first, uh, let us take a look at the press release from Geovax, and then I will break it down in simple terms to explain what I think it means. And at the end of this video, you will know exactly what this means for the arrival of a new HIV vaccine. So here is the press release. It reads, Geovax receives notice of allowance for HIV vaccine patent. And um, the question is, what is the notice of allowance? And... Um, if they are going to get a patent, does that mean that FDA has already approved the vaccine? Does it mean that this vaccine is now going to come into the market? What is going to be the price of this vaccine? Where will it be available? These are all the questions that comes into the mind of an ordinary person who is looking at this press release. The objective of our video today is to demystify this whole thing and explain to you what exactly it means. So here it says, Geovax Labs, a biotechnology company developing immunotherapies and vaccines against cancer, and infectious diseases today announced that the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has issued a notice of allowance for patent application number so-and-so, titled Multivalent HIV Vaccine Boost Compositions and Methods of Use. The allowed claim generally cover a priming vaccination with a DNA vector encoding multiple HIV antigens in virus-like particles or VLPs, followed by a boost vaccination with GeoVaxis vector platform for expressing HIV-1 antigens in VLPs utilizing a MVA viral vector. So this is the technical description of what they got. And if you look at the uh, keywords out here, multivalent HIV vaccine boost compositions and methods of use. So it's not patenting a vaccination, but it's patenting the description of a vaccination method. So that's what they are doing out here. So now I would like to uh, give you a little bit more information on this patent process as well as this vaccine. In simpler terms, the announcement is saying that Geovax Labs, a biotech company, has received some good news from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. They have been granted permission to obtain a patent for something related to a potential HIV vaccine. The important part is what this vaccine approach does. It involves two steps. The first step is priming vaccination, which is given using a special type of genetic material uh, that carries parts of the HIV virus packaged in virus-like particles. Then a boost vaccination is administered using GeoVaxis technology, uh, which also carries HIV virus par particles, but uses a different method, that is the MVA viral vector. This approach is seen as a way to help the body's immune system to learn how to fight HIV. A MVA vectored vaccine, often referred to as an MVA vaccine, is a type of vaccine that uses a modified vaccinia Ankara virus, which is MVA. Uh, it uses this virus vector to deliver antigens and stimulate an immune response in the body. And here's a breakdown of what this means. Vector means the context of, in the context of vaccine, a vector is a harmless or weakened microorganism, usually a virus or a piece of genetic material that is used to carry and deliver specific antigens to the immune system. Antigens are the substances that trigger an immune response. MVA is a highly modified and accentuated or weakened strain of the vaccinia virus. And the vaccinia virus is related to the smallpox virus, but uh, in it's, it's kind of a much less virulent form of that virus. MVA has been extensively modified to make it safe for use in vaccines. Uh, it cannot replicate or cause diseases in humans. Uh, in this case, the MVA vector is used only to, uh, in stage 2, which is the booster stage. In case of MVA vectored vaccines, scientists generally engineer the MVA virus to carry and express antigens 
from the target pathogen, uh, such as a virus or a bacterium. These antigens are usually proteins or parts of the pathogen uh, that the immune system recognizes as foreign. In this case, it is not clear which antigen was used in the MVA component, but as I went, uh, went on to read more about it, I suspect that it is the uh, gag protein uh, that's been used in the MVA in this particular case. And when it comes to immune re response, when the MVA vectored vaccine is administered to a uh, person, the MVA virus acts as a delivery system presenting the antigens to the immune system. The immune system recognizes these antigens as foreign invaders and mounts an immune response. This response includes the production of antibodies and activation of immune cells or T cells uh, that can recognize and fight this uh, this pathogen and that's how the body learns uh, how to fight uh, HIV because in this case in this particular vaccine they are using all HIV related antigens and this uh, this immune response generated by the MVA vectored vaccine trains the immune system to recognize and remember the pathogens antigens uh, if the person is later ex later on exposed to the actual pathogen their immune system is better prepared and ready to mount a rapid and effective defense because not not only does it have the anti uh, antibodies, uh, but also has the mobilized uh, T cells, which are ready to produce more antibodies. So the uh, severity of the infection is uh, reduced, and uh, the body is much more well primed to uh, handle the infection. MBA vector vaccines have been used in research and development for a variety of infections, uh, such as uh, HIV, malaria, and Ebola. And GeoVax itself used uh, MVA for various other. Uh, targets that they are working on. Uh, and MVA is considered safe and effective delivery system for antigens as the MVA virus itself does not cause disease in humans and has a strong track record of uh, safety in clinical trials. These vaccines are part of the broader field of viral vector vaccines where other harmless viruses are used as delivery vehicles for antigens to stimulate uh, immune response. In essence, GeoVax is getting a patent for a method they have developed to potentially create an HIV vaccine. It's important to note that getting a patent doesn't mean that the vaccine is ready to go or approved by FDA for use. It's just uh, a protection for their unique method and idea until they are ready to put their time and efforts to actually develop uh, the vaccine further and bring it to market. Further research and testing are still needed before it could become a real vaccine. On the NIH website, I have found a record for phase one clinical trial of MVA62, and um, the results were very impressive, but it's not MVA62B, which is referred to in the press release. So I do not know if MVA62 and MVA62B are one and the same, or there is any difference, but let me talk to you about MVA62. The, the record describes the first part of the vaccine as follows. It says the DNA and recombinant modified vaccine virus Ankara uh, vaccines in this uh, phase one study encode GAG protease, uh, PR, uh, reverse uh, transcriptase, RT, and the uh, native membrane-bound uh, trimeric form of ENV to produce non-infectious virus-like particles uh, that I mean, that description leads me to think that the gag protein is encoded in the MVA or booster portion of the vaccine. It's always better to target um, vital, non-mutable uh, parts of the virus and the gag protein uh, in order to find a good target or a stable target and the longer lasting uh, capability for the virus. That's why typically the antigens uh, spike protein of the virus is uh, targeted. And in this case, uh, they are looking at the GAG protein, uh, the trimeric form, which is actually the one that uh, where you have GP120, which latches onto the CD4, and GP41, which uh, perforates the membrane of the CD4 and deposits the RNA payload into the CD4 T cell. So I'm thinking that it has got something to do with one of those GAG, GAG proteins, uh, either in the very early form when it is replicating or post-replication form when it's already a trimer. I'm not very clear about that. Once I find more information, I'll pass it on to you guys. But right now, that's what it seems. And in the trial, the median age of participants was 24 years, and 58% were female. The majority were white, 73%, or African-American, that is 16%. All 120 participants received their initial vaccine. And 104 of them, which is around 87%, uh, received all prescribed doses. The vaccines were safe and well tolerated among various dose levels in the trial. HIV-1 specific antibodies were uh, induced more frequently and at higher levels by the full dose. 
And uh, what I don't know is whether MVA62 is the same as uh, MVA62B that is mentioned in the press release, as I said before. So I'm going to assume that it means the same, but um, uh, please don't hold, hold me to it. Um, and then uh, let us have a quick look at their pipeline section. I want to show you the pipeline section uh, because there is no mention of this vaccine in their pipeline. So here is the pipeline of the company and uh, I'm just going to reduce the magnification a little so that you can see all of them at once. So this is the pipeline and nowhere does it mention anything about the uh, HIV vaccine or the MVA62B out here. And it's not even there in their press releases. So if you go to the press release, it's not there except for this particular press release that I read to you. There's nothing else on that. There's another M, uh, MVA-based uh, vaccine, but that is for uh, solid tumors. So that's what I have here, uh, which basically means that this company doesn't plan to create this vaccine immediately. Their focus, they say, is on COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, and a few other targets, but uh, HIV is their long-term goal, and that explains why they have gone ahead and uh, filed for a patent, because it seems that the, the the methodology is very promising, so any other company would like to take it and run. So in order to pre uh, preserve their intellectual property, they have gone ahead and done the patent. And now all they have to do, the approval they have got, is, is that the patent office is saying, okay, we, uh, we have seen your application, we have seen the methodology that you have described. It seems like if a person or a company with sufficient skills were to take up this approach, they would be able to come up with a viable vaccine candidate. Uh, and also you have got this uh, phase one clinical trial results which are very promising. So we are now allowing you to go ahead and pay the fees and uh, clinch your patent. So that's what is the significance of the press release that we saw. And that's the reason why GeoVax is patenting it because they don't have an intention of doing anything in the short term, but in the long term, they want to develop this vaccine. So they are protecting their rights. So that's what is happening out here uh, in, in, in the press release. So that's how you have to understand it. While this is a positive development for GeoVax, they do not seem to have a plan to develop this vaccine anytime soon. So that's the message I would like to leave you with. They are focused on COVID-19. Um, and as I said, some other company uh, can license this uh, from them. I don't know if uh, GeoVax intends to provide a license. And if any company licenses this approach from them, uh, then they take the risk of uh, success or failure which may come when they try to implement a vaccine uh, because um, uh, everything depends on the implementation, how you do uh, the implementation. And I suspect that GeoVax probably has a patent even for the MVA platform that they have. So it could be a kind of package deal and they may even ask for a share in the revenue going forward. So all those things are possible. So uh, that's that's how I look at it. Uh, they have a strong uh, research uh, data in phase one trial of MVA62. So that's a, that shows that is a very, very strong prospect out here. Uh, if the management changes their mind, they could actually embark on uh, commercializing this, uh, you know, moving towards commercializing this and completing an application for phase two and uh, and proceeding further. So uh, when it comes to the U.S. Uh, patent application, notice of allowance is an official notification from the United States Patent and Trade, uh, Trademark Office to the applicant that their patent application has been uh, reviewed and it is allowed to proceed to grant, uh, I mean, as long as uh, they are able to pay the fees. So they just have to go ahead and pay the fees and uh, complete the formalities and they will get the patent. So uh, the, the sequence... There's a whole sequence of uh, patent applications. Uh, that's for another video. I'll probably do a separate video for uh, how US patent application works. Uh, but uh, right now, the notice of allowance means that the patent examiner has determined that the invention meets all the necessary criteria and is uh, eligible for a, a patent. So that's all there is to this one. Uh, and um, friends, I think uh, what I would like to tell you is that um, uh, please do not feel disheartened uh, by, uh, with this particular video that I have. Uh, I promise to bring you, uh, to the best of my knowledge, accurate information. And um, uh, I think that uh, it is positive that they have got a notice of allow allowance uh, to proceed with this uh, patent. Uh, the intellectual property is safe. 
and uh, they could grab this opportunity as soon as they have finished uh, their work with the COVID-19 vaccine and they have got the manpower. So, um, yeah, and it also opens up the opportunity for some other big uh, pharma to just take this and run with it and pay off uh, Geovax and um, that's another possibility. And meanwhile, I have some good news for you. It's not all uh, uh, wait and wait and wait. Uh, I have uh, another interview uh, scheduled with Jeff Galvin. Uh, we have been uh, working with uh, AGT and uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to cover new ground, uh, give new information for you guys. The interviews uh, will, will take place uh, next week, uh, middle of next week. And I will release it to you before the end of next week. So stay tuned and uh, keep watching. And this brings me to the uh, end of this video. Well, friends, for over a year, I have been uh, bringing you uh, HIV content, uh, therapies, uh, research work uh, that has been successful and um, a whole lot of information and wherever possible I have been bringing you interviews with companies. So uh, it's a lot of work uh, to get this, uh, keep this going because uh, uh, I do a lot of reading before I bring something to you. Most of the information, all of the information here is vetted information uh, and I believe that uh, ShareTrek uh, is the only channel on the internet that gives you one or two videos on HIV every week, that two on unique subjects, talking about therapies and progress uh, in uh, managing HIV and also research uh, information. So uh, it's time uh, that I get some support from, uh, from the audience here. I'm really grateful that we have grown from uh, 100 uh, subscribers to very close to 5,000. We'll touch 5,000 probably in another eight or nine days. Uh, so I'm really grateful for that. And also we have uh, two subscribers for HIV and uh, uh, two Patreons for, uh, three Patreons for HIV. So that's what we have. But neither our Patreon has grown in the last six months, uh, nor has our membership grown. Uh, we have just got five, uh, five members out of which just two are for HIV, uh, out of almost 5,000 uh, subscribers. And uh, we have a lot of views in our uh, channel. So uh, I think that um, it's time that you, uh, the subscribers could uh, uh, consider upgrading to become members and give me some real solid support. I'm in a very expensive jurisdiction. I'm working out of Toronto. And uh, in order to keep the HIV programming going on at this pace and to increase it further, I will need to engage help and uh, that's going to cost me money uh, and um, uh, I really need the channel to start paying up for itself so that I can continue with the HIV portion uh, and um, uh, this is where I request you, it's a very frantic uh, uh, last ditch uh, request. My target was around 100 members by the end of this year and we are just at two members and uh, three Patreons. So. Uh, I really need you guys to step up, either press the join button and become a member in YouTube or scroll down into the description and copy the link to Patreon and uh, become a member of, uh, of this channel or a Patreon of this channel and uh, help us uh, continue keeping the lights on on the HIV program uh, in the channel. So with that said, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end. I'm sorry, it seems like uh, I'm constantly asking you to join, but there has been no response. And that's why my appeals become more and more frantic. So hopefully you would not make me ask more. Just press the join button or become a Patreon today. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.